Hey you guys, it's Lisa Spangler here with a video for Studio Calico. Today I'm going to share how I made this card in my gallery from start to finish. It uses a really neat technique that you can do with color theory inks. And I just gotta say that I really loved hearing all of your comments and everything on Instagram when I did the sneak peek for this card. And that's one of the reasons why I chose this one for doing the video. So to get started, I grabbed a bunch of color theory inks and I'll go through the colors as I use them. The stamps from this month's main card kit. I just love this stamp set so much. Um, and especially the you left me up message and the mountain. I really have a thing for mountains. And then I'm going to be using this water brush because it, I find it helps me control how much water comes out on the paper. But you could use a regular brush and water as well. And so here's just a few of those color theory inks. As you can see, I have quite a collection here. And then we're also going to need a permanent waterproof ink, such as the Zeranger Archival ink, or you could use like a Hero Arts Memories ink. You can't stamp the images with the color theory inks because since they react with the water when you stamp them, if you try to do this technique, stamping your images in color theory inks, you'll just like uh, make a big mess. They'll just blur and run everywhere. So I started out by stamping the You Lift Me Up first, just so I could get the positioning for that. And then I stamped some mountains down below. And here's a little trick that you can do with an image such as this mountain one. And that is to grab a post-it note and mask off one side of the mountain like this. And this way you can overlap the images and make it so that it, they look like a little bit different from one another. I love doing this technique too. So just put the post-it note there and then stamp and then lift it up and there you have it. So I went ahead and finished stamping the card. Um, I put the clouds a little bit different on this one than on my gallery one, but I think that's okay. And I love it that when you stamp, it doesn't have to be the same each time. So first I'm going to show you how to color the mountains, and I'm going to start out with the something blue ink. This is really pretty blue. And what I do is I just tap some of the color in directly into the lid. And I take my water brush, and I learned this from someone, I don't remember who it was, but when you first start using your water brush, if you just rub it like this on the back of your hand, the heat from your hand will warm up the bristles and really make it uh, where it works a lot better. Then I'm just going into the lid, and I pick up some color on the brush, and then just color away. Look at how easy that is. I really, really like doing this technique because you get really pretty colors and you get more from your supplies too. So then I go back in and pick up some more color and move on to the next mountain. And I put a little bit more there. Now I'm going to add some shading with the darker blue. This is the Deja Blue. And I just need a little bit of this. So I'm gonna to try to water it down a little bit so it doesn't stand out too much from the something blue that's already there. So that looks like it's pretty good. I like to have a little bit of scratch paper so I can just test the colors um, just to see how strong it will be or not. And there's the shading on the first mountain. Pretty easy, right? So I went ahead and did the second mountain too. Um, so we're done with the blue for now. And now I'm going to go in and do the green around the trees. This is called Limelight, and I really love this color. It's like a really nice bright green. And once again, I just did the same thing where I put some on the lid and then picked up the color with the brush. And this is really, really loose coloring. I'm not trying to be exact or anything like that. Um, I'm just going over here and don't worry if you get one area darker and one area lighter. That's part of what makes it really interesting and cool. 
And then another thing that I like to do is just to dot on some colors. You saw me there. I'll show you more about that later. So now I just wiped off my brush on the scratch paper and I'm going to get some yellow. This is sunny day. And for some reason, I wanted to tell you this, the camera uh, doesn't pick up the yellow very well from the green color on this camcorder. I don't know what is up with that, but um, trust me, this is really yellow that I'm putting up here and it's not green. And so I'm just dabbing on some color here and there, doing some dots, just really loose coloring. I'm not trying to be precise or exact or anything. I found that it really helps um, me if I play some happy music while I'm coloring. I don't have any on now because uh, you might not like the same music that I do. Um, but anyhow, it helps me to play music so that I don't uh, think too much while I'm doing this and I can just have fun and color. Um, so now I'm going to add some pink. This is to make it kind of like a sunrise. And this is the blush crush that I'm using right now. And I just gotta say, whoever came up with the names for the color theory inks is a genius. I just love all the names. I laugh every time I see them, especially well read. Well read always cracks me up. So I'm just dotting on some more of the blush crush here and there. And I really like too how the yellow and the sunny day and the blush crush overlap to make like a little orangey color. That's one of the beauties of watercolor. And I decided I wanted a little bit more intense orange. So now I'm going to add some Orange County. And like I said, I'm just dotting this on. I think it's really... Um, fun and anybody can make dots so this isn't something that you need to be intimidated about or anything like this so just dot on some orange county kind of here and there just like that and that is it for the card as you can see i left a little bit of room at the bottom so i can add some pattern paper so i put the yellow striped pattern paper at the bottom and then this is my gallery card so it's a little bit different from the one i just uh, was working on for the video. But I hope you give this technique a try and thanks so much for joining me today. Bye!